On this episode of the Rummy Sharp Show, we got a chance to talk to TJ Scott about his ongoing Kickstarter campaign in the tub. What a blast we had. Come along and listen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Roaming Startup Show. Um, I know we have quite a few people on the live show. Um, as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and hashtag Roaming Startup, and we'll get your questions on the air. And I have Bob and TJ here. Bob, how's it going? It's going great, Zach. I'm really excited about tonight's show. Uh, as you, you and I have been talking about this show all week. And we also have TJ Scott, who photograph, who was the photographer of In the Tub. Welcome, TJ. Thank you very much, and uh, appropriately, I think I'm in the tub where uh, a lot of my coffee table book was was shot. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Uh, you have a couple friends with you, but how did you actually get the in the tub idea? Well, my primary uh, job is as a television and film director, but I found myself doing more and more photography, and I was shooting a lot of uh, commercial photography, and for some reason or not, I always gravitated towards putting people in a bathtub at the end of it. And at some point, I realized that really photography was a secondary goal for me, and I had all sorts of really cool and interesting friends that I would photograph, bands, uh, uh, rock stars, uh, musicians, actors, and stuff. And I realized, you know what, let's try and do something cooler than just commercial photography in, the, in my spare time. And I started doing portraits of people in bathtubs. My mother's a, a breast cancer survivor for 27 years, so it's always been a big part of my life is breast cancer and dealing with it. And I've, I've realized that over the years, the treatment of breast cancer has gotten better and better. When my mother started out, they were like, they gave her six months to live. And uh, treatment and drugs and stuff are getting better. And I just sort of thought, you know, perhaps we could get some awareness for breast cancer and uh, drive some money that direction. And money turns into research, and research turns into better medicine and better treatment. So that's kind of a bit of the thrust behind the book. I've noticed that throughout the book, and I'm a backer of this project, a big fan of it. I've noticed throughout the book from the video on Kickstarter that lots of of obvious friends of yours from Spartacus are involved in this project. Tell us a little bit about that, and I know you were a director for Spartacus and, and still are. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Uh, Spartacus is a fantastic show, and uh, did you know, do you guys know there was a, a time zone change today, a, a time, you know, it was daylight savings or something? <laughs> yeah. So my friends from Spartacus will be showing up, but probably late since I uh, queued everyone at the wrong time, but... Uh, I directed on Spartacus. Uh, I came in in the second season and then the current season, and it's just a fantastic show. Uh, it's uh, a show that's Shakespearean, but uh, with lots of gore and sex and uh, violence, but really Shakespearean storylines, and the actors on it were all fantastic, and it was just uh, an incredible show to be involved in. And while I was over there this season, I was shooting the book, and the producers were fantastic. They gave me a whole part of our studio to shoot my In the Tub book. So 18 people involved in Spartacus are within this book. How, how did you come by some, uh, some of your other people in the book? I know that you had quite a few connections and you have, I, I believe it's over 50 in the book. Uh, where, where did you meet those people and, and how did you get them in the tub? There's, a, there's 155 people in the book. <laughs> okay, a lot more than 50. <laughs> 155 different people. Uh, they're Friends of mine, uh, and then friends of friends. It kind of snowballed a lot, and uh, uh, people that I'd never met before, but uh, uh, had heard about, all of a sudden wanted to be in the book. Uh, so uh, a third-hand one was like Stacy Dash came into the book, and she was a friend of a friend of a friend, and it was sort of fun like that. Um, all sorts of people, and well, let's start bringing some people in. I mean, this. This is, this is a very obvious one. I'm going to bring in my wife, Victoria Pratt, who's an actress. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> and, and Victoria is the, the still shot on the video when it starts on, online, right? She is indeed. <laughs> and, and it is an amazing shot. It is a beautiful <laughs> shot. Vic, hey. Victoria uh, uh, used to be, for people who don't know her, uh, probably the top fitness model in the world when I met her. And uh, then uh, gone downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> then became an actress. Uh, all all sorts of TV series, Mutant X and Xena and uh, Cleopatra twenty five twenty five, uh, as well as tons of guest starring stuff. 
Uh, so she was an obvious one for me to shoot, though oddly enough, was not the first in the tub, uh, and was not the last. Um, There's been a lot of uh, been a lot of strange poon in her tub. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the shots have been so different. All the shots have been so different. Even though you're using the same medium for the art, it, it's been amazing how the different look is based on the personality that is in that tub. And talk a little bit about how you got them to choose how they wanted their image to look. A lot of the time, uh, I, I, the way I approach it is I'm just doing a portrait of you. It just happens to be in a bathtub, is the way I describe it to people. And there's something about a bathtub that kind of strips everything back. I mean, most people are nude when I shoot them in the tub, even though you don't necessarily see that. And it just takes you back to a very relaxed state. Everyone knows how to be in a tub. But when I bring in Juliet Bevan from the band 8mm, Juliet has a number of shots in the book. She uh, seems to be very relaxed in that tub. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. No. <laughs> you, you may notice uh, that there's a shot of a woman throwing milk, and that's all she's wearing is the milk that's in the air. And Juliet and I were just shooting, and I said, hey, Juliet, why don't you just throw the milk and see what happens? We, we often put like a gallon of milk into uh, the tub, and it makes sort of an opaqueness that you can hide under. But she just threw it up, and it just seemed to cover her nudeness. <laughs> and it is an amazing shot. It, and she's also in the video that you have on Kickstarter as one of the stills, and just an amazing shot. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, things happen with TJ. He goes, why don't you just, and all of a sudden you're naked in a tub throwing milk around. <laughs> but it always starts with us having it together. Exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool? Um, you got a whole book. <laughs> i got to tell you, those milk pads are great for the skin, and they're hell on a manicure. Yeah. Right? They peel that stuff right off. Little do you know. Ju Juliet has uh, a number of the photos that are in the book. We, we did, I think, four or five shoots together. Quite a few people did multiple shoots for the book. It just kind of became fun. Uh, and uh, one of them's with her, got warm water. her husband, uh, <laughs> Sean Bevan, who's uh, also in the band 8mm, but also is a famous... Come and sit beside my brother, Sean. Aww. Aww. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> you don't worry, you guys will do that later. <laughs> Sean's a famous uh, music producer who's worked with Marilyn Manson, just finished Marilyn Manson's uh, Grammy-nominated album. Uh, has done the Grammy nominated to work for Nine Inch Nails, no doubt. He's worked with Guns N' Roses. Uh, and he's actually uh, doing the scoring the soundtrack for my latest movie called Death Valley, which is awesome. So uh, Sean ended up uh, actually beside the tub with Juliet in it. Yep. You know, once Juliet gets in the tub, it's, it's, it's been filled, so. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Well, that's not true. That's with two other people, you, me, and George. Yeah. Oh, that's so that true. Means he's never been in the actual tub. No, this is a, this is my first time. First actually. time in the tub with TJ. That's, that's awkward. Never mind. That's awkward. Well, you can cut around that. Okay, right? Yeah, we can yeah. move on. Yeah, we'll <laughs> break too much the night before. Don't don't worry, guys. We'll edit all this stuff out. <laughs> We can trust you, I know. <laughs> oh, famous last words. Oh. Famous last words. So, TJ, I know that uh, Kickstarter is not usually the place where somebody will fund a a, a cause. There, it's usually about product, and obviously, you have an amazing product. But talk to us a little bit about the tie-in with the cause. Did it cause you any grief with Kickstarter? Was it was it a bit of a workaround? How did you make that work? Well. The way we have to look at my project is that it's not really for a cause. It's not, uh, it's, it's, uh, I personally give my money that happens to be not from directing to breast cancer research. And if the funds from this, the profit happens to go to me, then that's where it will go. Uh, is kind of the way we look at it. But the project itself is not, uh, it's not donations to a cause. It's it, first and foremost an, an art book, a talk book. Beautiful pictures. Yeah, and that's when, and really, I just happen to be personally giving my my profits uh, to breast cancer research because that's what I do. Got a couple Twitter questions. The first one actually comes from my wife, so I better read it first, or else I'll be in trouble. <laughs> um, it, it's uh, it's for Victoria, and she wants to know how you trans, how someone working at York University doing test studies on NHL players becomes. Uh -huh. a she wants to know how that transition happened. You know what? I was I was 
working in the human performance lab at the university, and um, I was writing a book with one of my professors. And uh, I went to Muscle Mag to the offices to buy to buy photographs for it. And Robert Kennedy, who's the publisher, said, "Hey, I'll do a, a photo shoot with you." And that's how it all snowballed, and I became one of their models. I, I later wrote for the magazine, and uh, Robert Kennedy was the one who convinced me to take acting classes. So it, it really did snowball from there. And it's it's weird. It was circuitous, but it was it was weird. Yes. Yeah, we have more people sneaking in. Yeah, Sailor yeah. Scott, <laughs> Derek Croco, the band, uh, the band uh, Automatic Eden, have, have just dropped in. And uh, they're also in the top, and they just happen to show up. I came for the booze. I know them. I'm going to do a bunch of reasons. I think there's tequila here. I, I, I was going to say, without a decent amount of tequila, I'm not sure this is going to end like I think it is. So. <laughs> I wish you guys were here. We think you guys is one hell of a market. <laughs> so okay, the we'll take a rain check on that, I promise you. <laughs> Deal. you. You asked how people find their way into the, into the tub. Uh, Automatic Eden uh, had worked with Sean, who was uh, doing some producing for them, and he introduced us to them. And uh, the second I saw Sayla, I was like, uh, okay, we need her in the tub. <laughs> and, uh, Can you see Sayla? I met, I met Sayla on a Friday night and Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, she was nude in the tub. <laughs> Yo, that's the weekend. That's, that's, that's the way to wake up on a Saturday morning, let me tell you. There, there are a few conversations when you first meet someone that ends quickly with, I need to see you in a tub right away. But whatever works for you, TJ. Yeah. <laughs> so watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Now. Uh -huh. We were uh, once once at a show, and uh, Victoria saw this band, uh, Vera Mesmer, who was also friends of Sean and Juliet, and she walked up to the band members and said, before I even knew it, said, "My husband's going to want to see you in the tub." <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did end up shooting that band in the tub. Yeah, <laughs> and they are. Yeah. I, I, he, I, he was speechless. He was just like. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I do. I do have another question for Sean, and it's with everybody that you've worked with. Who's the most interesting person that you've worked with? Aside from your wife, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cover, cover, Sean. Cover. Um, um, you know, they're they all have their extraordinarily interesting moments, and uh, you know, there's just. I've been blessed to work with really brilliant people and really interesting, you know. I mean, uh, I, I always talk about Manson because he's one of my best friends, you know what I mean, and I, I love him. So um, he's probably, because we've worked together for so long, we just have developed a really cool relationship, so. Have you produced all of Maryland's? Oh, not all of them. I, there's one record that I wasn't involved in that's so exciting. But uh, it's really, you know, it's just awesome. You know, he's a great guy. Fun to do that. An amazing imagination and showman. Uh, talk a little bit about how you keep up with that in a studio. I mean, that would, it seems like you'd be running constantly. Yeah, it's, it's a little like Vietnam, really. <laughs> you know, um, you know it's, one of the things is uh, he's one of those guys that's very, very interested in the world. And so in order to kind of keep up with them, you have to be interested in the world as well. And I guess that's true um, anytime you're working in an artistic artistic endeavor you need to have that kind of uh, interest in other things you know it's not just music it's it's art it's television it's film it's it's uh, what's going on economically around the world what's you know those are all things that inform us all it's you know why does TJ shoot naked women in bathtubs <laughs> well Duh. I mean besides the obvious <laughs> I was going to say that, I'm not sure I'm not sure you got to be all that deep to understand this it's like because because it can help it can help people out. I mean, we've, we've, we've done some pretty amazing stuff. So um, everything's informed by everything else, and and uh, the energy of all the creative people that have been involved in this project have has uh, inspired all of us in our other projects. So it's a uh, you know, art is a pretty amazing thing. You know, you surround yourself by creative people, and, and magic moments happen. True that. <laughs> Who was the most nervous during their shoot um, while you were doing this, TJ? Oh, jeez. 
Um, I think it was me when that light almost fell. You know, it, it's funny. Um, people are nervous before they come to the shoot, and when they show up, no one ever really seems to be that nervous once they get here and realize uh, how comfortable it is. There's something about a bathtub that's very soothing. Uh, I, I kind of liked it too, and we haven't talked about this because. Nobody ever sees anyone else in the bathtub. You may see your spouse, a couple of loved ones, but you know, if, if you got to count the number of people you see nude in a bathtub, it's very few. Uh, but people are yeah. comfortable in a bathtub. <laughs> wait, wait, what, whatever, whatever the side conversation is, I, we're much more interested in that, TJ, than whatever you were just saying. <laughs> But you know what? I don't think uh, very many people were nervous, and some people had zero nerves. These three women, zero nerves whatsoever. <laughs> Not um, but we should. It's the Canadian accent. Yay! Yay! Woo! Yay! 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 Welcome to the show, guys. You need a you need a much bigger tub, TJ. <laughs> I need a bigger studio, is what I need. <laughs> who's who's the uh, who's the guest star there on all fours? Uh, me. <laughs> this is Angel, who is actually also in the book. Uh, she did a pose with her mother. <laughs> she looked she was really happy about it. <laughs> so you've, uh, you've you've got a couple of uh, Sparty team here now. Uh, we yeah, Trani out there in twi uh, on Twitter asked a question about if you could give us your favorite memory or funniest prank from your time on Spartacus. My favorite memory uh, was when I got to fight Ellen Holman, who plays Saxa in I think it was episode eight in uh, Spartacus Vengeance. But it was the first time I actually had, got to have an entire full-on fight scene, and because it was between two women, it was just very entertaining for all the boys on set. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's yeah. probably my character. I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have to direct that one, too. <laughs> yeah. so, so, yes, there, people were playing, paying very, very close attention to that fight. And, um, Big round of applause afterwards. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. The guys were quiet, and they're like, all right, cool, sweet, let's move on. And then the girls did it. Yeah. For some reason, we just couldn't get a take that was good enough, so we had to keep doing it over and over again. All day long. <laughs> and then it didn't make it in the final cup. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have done it at lunch. <laughs> so Katrina did uh, three shoots, I think, for the tub. I mean, I, we did three separate ones. She can't keep herself out of this tub. I love getting naked for TJ. <laughs> and, she, and she and Vanessa are actually in the tub together in a shot. Yeah. Uh, and Dan, be a friend. <laughs> Dan was the only uh, guy who was in the special edition of the book. And the special Whoa. edition of the book is a slightly more risque. <laughs> Maybe he can tell you how he's the only guy who made it into the slightly more risque. I, I, I was going to say, Dan, what, what did you have to do to make it into that special edition? You never yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, well, I hate looking at that picture. Uh, <laughs> <I'm alone. laughs> uh, I, DJ showed me uh, heaps and heaps of photos beforehand, and I noticed that no one had uh, uh, stood up in the tub, and so I decided to stand up fully naked in the tub. Really? <laughs> It's a terrible, terrible photo of abs. <laughs> so none of us, none of us like it. We get to keep it. Yeah, yeah. You have to look at it over and over again. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of time is spent looking for the error. Is that what you're saying? I will. Uh, I have a Flickr page where, as I was shooting the book, we were promoting the book, and the number of hits that that photo got the second that it went up was crazy. I know. Is there a funny well, of course, it's it's special edition. Is still drooping. I think I had a stroke when I <laughs> I think 50 of those views are mine. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Canada Grit wants to know who got stuck cleaning up the tub. And did. <laughs> <laughs> to the Victor go the. I, 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 no. yeah. <laughs> I, I just have to say, it's not all glamour. <laughs> no. there's, there's about 40 minutes of glamour, and then I'm cleaning the tub. Um, listen, <laughs> you're not going to have anyone feeling sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Well, he has to drain a tub. Oh, oh. So sad. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> The world's smallest violin. <laughs> Sorry, TJ. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> no, but Sean Timberlake? Actually, there was a, a making of. Uh, well, I was photographing Juliet. Sean was photographing me. So yeah, right. That's so I, I have done some photos of him, like, almost up on the ceiling, backwards, with his legs <laughs> yeah. spread. Like, he just missed. <laughs> oh, yeah. What photo shoot is this? <laughs> 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 it gets awkward down there. It's Ninja Turtle. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Matt, uh, I mean, I shot in a lot of live bathrooms. A lot of them are, are, you know, six feet by five feet. They're very small. So uh, to light them and get where I needed to be to get the angle, I really had to do a bit of a contortionist act. That's, that's why I got my cool. studio here with a, a tub that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, and when we did the Spartacus cast uh, this season, we had a whole studio that the producers gave me to shoot in, which is great. Uh, some, somebody else asked, what's your secret pickup line to get so many women in your bathtub, TJ? <laughs> what is this miracle? Yeah. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually very simple. I just show them the shoot, shoots from uh, previous shoots. That's what happened. You were asking about people being nervous before, and I actually was nervous, but it was I had seen some of the images, and I'm like, I have to be part of this. I just have to. It's worth it. Get over it. It's got to get in there, you know? And so, but once we started, like, he makes you not nervous. It's basically the thing. He's such a pro. And it's this really back and forth that's very artistic, and you're not thinking about people and kids. I don't actually see nude people in the tub. I just see a photo as, yeah. I'm, as I'm creating it. That's all I see is the art and the form. Uh, it's, it's only afterwards I go, oh. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, gonna say <laughs> somewhere along the line there's a cleanup section, and at that point there's a nude person in, in the studio. I, I tend to shoot very few people a day, too. It'll be one or two shots a day. So. You mentioned that you went to a lot of different locations with different tubs, and I know lighting can be so difficult in some of those environments. Uh, did, you, did you use a portable lighting kit? How did you make the light? Because the lighting is amazing on a lot of these shots. This is uh, Nick Tarabay from Spartacus. Many people well, know him as Asher. I'll just uh, briefly answer. I, I have a number of ways of lighting. Uh, I have uh, quite a few little tricks. A lot of it's bounce light, but some of it's actually lighting us right here, sort of the way that I like. But I try and make each shoot look completely different. So uh, I figure out what the, how the people look good and sort of the mood they're in. Uh, and then next came in. Down. As you can see, we all get along just swimmingly. We get along just perfect. Yeah, and the last two weeks in depth, I was a little incestuous. Yeah. Nick, so, so Nick, to the show. Nick, how'd you end up nude in a tub? First of all, I wasn't nude, my friend. <laughs> I don't know if you didn't notice, there was shorts there. <laughs> See, I'm not as brave as Dan, so, uh, you know, so, but yeah, yeah, you know, TJ has a way of getting you with the top. <laughs> and that, that all it took, actually, pretty much. He was like, listen, um, I want you in the top. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was strange. I was, I'm still trying to wonder how did I do that. No, but, but overall, it was, I, I think it was beautiful. It was just the shots looked really nice, and, and uh, you know, TJ got this great eye, and it just made us all look good. Now, did did everybody here hang out before the shoot, or have you got to know people through the, everybody here through the shoot? Did I what? I'm sorry. Did this this whole group that we have here? Did you guys know each other beforehand, or have you all oh, kind of come no. together because oh, of the no, shoot? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was not I knew a couple of them just from working on with them on Spartacus, but the rest I met on the Death Valley shoot that we just did in um, Death Valley. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just finished doing an indie movie that uh, I wrote and directed called Death Valley, and uh, oh, everyone but Dan yeah. were going, <laughs> Dan's going oh, in the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So tell us, tell us a little bit about that, about that show and the shoot. First off, tell us about the show and any fun stuff about the shoot. Oh, it was a, it was a killer shoot. Uh, what was? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, death Valley. Killer shoot, yes. <laughs> Let's go way, way into Death Valley. It was kind of a fun thing that when we did Spartacus, we had a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of resources. Uh, and I kind of had this idea that I wanted to do something very independent that we did with minimal and try and see if we could do something super cool. Which we just had the excess. Let's let's see if we can do it with minimal. So we shot on a tiny budget with, and we called it a friends and family shoot. We we just went with people that was just like a tight little group that I knew, and uh, we shot it with the minimal amount of people. And I think it's going to come out fantastic. It'll be a little Sundance type movie. And Dan will be in the sequel. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Oh. Uh, well, when I asked about any stories, there were a lot of whispers and, oh, no, don't tell him that. So whatever that was, I want to know what that is. You can ask Nick a Spartacus yeah. question. If you were a male between the ages <laughs> of five, would you like to? <laughs> Seem like someone. Stories. About what? Death Valley? No, Spartacus. Spartacus. About Spartacus? Yes, your favorite story from the Spartacus. You know, I think it's the same story I keep talking about over and over, and I think it's boring, but I'm going to say it again anyway. Uh, we were in season one, we were doing uh, a scene which was very menacing. Me and John Hannah and Lucy were in the balcony, and everybody else was in the first and like on on the Lutus and the training ground. And I think it was the episode where Crixus gets whipped, and we were all there, and it was like really dark, and everybody was like, "Oh shit!" And the lighting and everything was just menacing. It was just beautiful. And I'm supposed to hand Badiatis' uh, head, but he throws oh. it in front of everybody <laughs> oh, to show them an example of what happens if you mess with the Romans. You know, so he throws it in there, and now. Crixus in the middle. It's a really wide, you know, wide stage. It really is. So we got Crixus in the middle. We have Andy was somewhere in there, and 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 uh, Peter was all the way to the right. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so we're just like, all right, I'm here. You know, everybody's like, got their guts on. I was like, oh, the fuck, this is gonna be a good scene. And all of a sudden, he grab, John grabs the head. He says whatever he says and tosses it. The fucking thing bounces <laughs> and it goes right into Peter's balls. <laughs> and you can, I don't know if you can even still see it. There's like, they're all standing there like, we're, we're live, we're live on the air. <laughs> That's right. Listen, if you're asking about Spartacus, you can handle Spartacus. <laughs> But, so, uh, yeah, the no, moral no. of the, the moral of this story, as I understand it, is while filming on Spartacus set, always remember to wear a cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When filming on Spartacus, get away from the picture because you're gonna get hit. <laughs> you're gonna get hit. Yeah. Uh, Dan, it, Dan, it looks like you have a fan that uh, first she wants me to let you know that uh, she loves you, uh, Lady Unaviv. Oh, she's God. from the she's from the Dominican Republic. And she wants to know what your favorite fi uh, part of filming Spartacus has been. Uh, my favorite moment, uh, I've just like Nick, I've said this a couple of times, was it was during first season. Uh, we were in the uh, watching the first two episodes, and I remember the first scene where it starts off on uh, Andy, and uh, he's just uh, chained up, and the camera just pans up, goes through the ceiling into the uh, the arena. And I just remember sitting there going. Holy shit! This is what I'm a part of. This is amazing. Yeah. So for me, that was uh, my favorite moment. Not all the making out with dudes and stuff. Oh, <laughs> that's my <laughs> episode three. <laughs> I thought your favorite parts were shooting bathtubs on the weekend. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Okay, so a question. Of, uh, back to the in, in the tub. A question about. Talk to us a little bit about the different items that the tub was filled with during all these shots, because it looked like uh, uh, from the video there was quite a few. <laughs> it's in the past, and we buried that past. <laughs> uh, I, I started out with water and then realized that there's uh, a modesty <laughs> issues with water. So I started to add uh, like one gallon of milk into it. 
And that kind of became the, the norm. It became sort of a milky thing where you could hide your bits and pieces under there. Sometimes we did bubble baths, but I tried to stay away from that because I thought it was a little bit cliche and not as noir and femme fatale sort of feel as I wanted to it. Uh, I do throw in, there's little colored tablets that you have for kids to make baths more attractive. And I often threw in color tablets to make the water blue or red or purple. Um, so those were kind of the main elements that were used, but a lot of it's just milk, and everyone asks what it is. But it's dry ice. Do oh, not, do not sit on that naked. Dry ice. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're telling me it, it wasn't steam; it was dry ice. Talk about that. That had to uh, leave an impression. Oh, it did. It did. <laughs> There, there was only about five dry ice shoots, but Dan did do one of them. Yeah, you sit down, you're like. <laughs> so what I would do is I would take little little so standing up wasn't an option, was it? <laughs> you had to stand up, right? I'm not sitting on this. It's one of those moments where you stand up and say, "I was in the pool." Yeah. <laughs> I would throw in little handfuls of it and say, "Just try not to sit on it." But of course, it's little pellets skipping around, around in water, so. Yeah. I can tell you, TJ did learn a valuable lesson about um, fog machines. <laughs> so, when your friends come over to do a photo shoot and bring a fog machine, you don't unplug the freezer. And if you do, when you plug it back in, you don't leave for three months on a little shooting oh. something or other. <laughs> and let your poor wife come down and discover a lake of 12 years of frozen yogurt. <laughs> Yeah. We're sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth it. I got rid of my turn of the century for ease. Yeah. I mean, All right. So I, I get to put you on the spot now, TJ. Uh, this is obviously a, uh, a, a politically incorrect question. Yes. And you didn't tell me there was nothing I couldn't ask. So yeah. what was your favorite shot in the book? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <DJ. laughs> okay, this one's actually going to be yes. easy, and no one's going to give me a hard time. Larry Hagman. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Shooting Larry Hagman uh, in the tub before he passed away. <laughs> Man, he, he, went, he, went for the easy, he went for the easy one, did he? Yeah. I, I, I have to say, Larry's shot is amazing. Talk a little bit about that shot. We were at a dinner party. Uh, we live right beside his manager, and uh, we were invited to a dinner party with Larry, and he was the most engaging guy. He would ask you what you were doing and really want to know what you were doing. So I showed him the bathtub shoots on my telephone over dinner. And he turned to me and said, could I be in your shoot, in your, in your bathtub thing? And I said, well, of course. I gave him my card, never expecting to hear from him. I got home from the dinner party and there was an email from Larry Hagman saying, when can we do this? And this is what I'd like to look like. And it had his manager shoot him in the tub without the bubbles, he said, but with bubbles. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing tomorrow? And he says, I'm free tomorrow. I go to Dallas the next day. And I said, I'll be there at 10. <laughs> I, I shot him in the tub in the bubble bath in, in his house. And then he said, you know, I'd like to do some promo shots. What are you doing right now? I said, Larry, I'm yours for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I shot the entire day with him doing all sorts of promo shots with him for his electric cars and his, uh, uh, his charities uh, after we'd done the tub shot. It, it's an amazing picture. I really like it quite a bit. I have a question for everybody around there. Talk a little bit about, was there any concerns at all, uh, contractual concerns, things like that, about doing the shoot? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, yeah, thanks for asking that. the same thing ever again. <laughs> uh, it's I will tell you, what, what I did do though is uh, uh, when I shoot, when I shoot anyone for this sort of thing, I say to them, you will be the only person who ever sees any photo until it's approved. And you approve it and you have a 100% kill. You can kill absolutely any shot, no questions whatsoever. And then even if I'm going to put something up on Flickr or whatever and people have approved it, I always say, Hey, remember that photo that we liked? I'd like to put it on Flickr. Hey, I'd like to put it in the book. So I double checked with everyone, uh, just in case they changed their mind too. So that's the way I work. Uh, another Twitter question is: uh, Has your mother seen the book, and was she present during any of the shoots? <laughs> my my mother loves the book. She's seen quite a bit of it, not all of it. 
My mother uh, uh, obviously is a breast cancer survivor, but she's also a preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. Was very shy growing up, but always had a camera in her hand. Never seen her within the last 30 years without a camera in her hand. And she went through all the photos with me and would often say, well, that one's got a little bit more boob in it, but I think you should use it because those are fabulous boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she actually did. And that was <laughs> For whatever it's worth, I, I agree with your mom. Yeah. <laughs> She's wise. She's a wise, she wise, very wise. But I would often sit at my desk and I would be photoshopping on one side and she would be photoshopping on the other and I'd be doing photoshopping with her. <laughs> Hang out there. Hang out, all right? So a question from Anita Joe. Um, TJ, she met you at the Burbank charity function and said you're an amazing director. What's next for you directing-wise? Uh, I head off Wednesday to South, uh, South Africa for two months to do Black Sales, which I hate to say is the show replacing Spartacus. No. Uh, now that Spartacus is done, it's uh, Michael Bay produced a uh, pirate show, so I'll be there for two months doing that. And, and that's going to be... As well as editing uh, Death Valley, the movie. So that's going to be two months? No, I'll be there two months to do two episodes. And just to try to keep in good graces with people, uh, we didn't unplug the freezer to do any of this, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> no frozen yogurt was harmed in the making. You know what, the only thing in our freezer right now is ice, and I'm not kidding you. Ice, bags of ice, so we can feed all this lot of booze. <laughs> Obviously, uh, with the Kickstarter project, you had quite a following that you could bring into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about how's this experience been with Kickstarter? Have you enjoyed it? Has it been a lot more work than you thought or less? Um, it's kind of interesting. Once you actually get up and going, Kickstarter kind of runs itself. Uh, I, I've tried not to be too pushy with it. Uh, my Flickr site has 4.1 million hits on it, so and that's featuring the bathtub shoots as I was going along, so I knew that people actually liked people in bathtubs, or I had an inkling that they did <laughs> from that. So I've kind of just let it go on its own, and I was trying to raise 30000 was the least I needed to be able to do a fairly good run of this book. And if I can hit 70000 that will let me to really do a, a, a good size world release of the book, which we already have planned. Um, so I'm hoping that even though 30 was the goal, we, we hit 70, and Kickstarter's been great. It's uh, uh, once we kind of figure out how to do the wording on how my my book works uh, as far as the profits go, it was all great. Another question from uh, late the Dominican Republic, uh, yeah. Lady Unvi. Um, she wants to know what's next for Dan and the rest of the Spartac Spartacus members since they uh, just let out of the bag that Spartacus isn't going to be continuing. Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> I think we all knew that Sparty was <laughs> <laughs> um, A few things on the table, but I've uh, got to keep it all quiet, really, uh, for me. Uh, kids? Do you have kids? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep that quiet! Are you keeping that quiet? Oh, <laughs> <are you> keeping <laughs> that quiet? <laughs> I don't know if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward! <laughs> We're done at the top. <laughs> well, Nick and I just finished work. Friday, but most of us just finished working on Friday, so I think we're going to take a week break <laughs> and then see what we can get our paws into next, but it's all kind of a mystery at this point, but it's fun. And Nick, you have a movie coming out soon. Yeah, yeah, called Dead Valley. No, <laughs> <laughs> he has another one too. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, May, something May. Star Trek or something. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Like that. Oh, God, what are those small budget yeah. items? Yeah. I know, I know. I'm like, please, get that. I'm like, seriously, I really have to do this. Uh, yeah, there's that, but but believe it or not, I mean, and, and I'm not just saying that because I'm here, as um, actually I am. No, just I'm actually saying that because, you know, we just went for like a couple of weeks to shoot Death Valley, the movie, and uh, we didn't know what to expect or what we're going to do, but it, you know, it was, probably was one of the best experiences I ever had. Yeah, the I worked on Spartacus, and I worked on Star Trek, and other on Crash, and I had a great time on all of these shows. But it was a tight, tight group, and everybody got along. We, we, we laughed, we joked, and you know, TJ let us do whatever we want. It was a mistake. Yeah, he's definitely gonna regret that. And, and, uh, and, but no, it was it was a, it was just great. It was all about the work, 
and it's, it felt like there was no business involved in a way, which is even though obviously business is involved. But it, it was it, it kind of reminded you what why did you fall in love with acting in the beginning? You know? So I'm really looking forward for people to see this movie and, 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 and for us to see it too and to yeah. see what, what what came what comes across. The collaboration yeah. process on this um, the movie that we all just did together is amazing. There were absolutely no divas on set except for a car named Christine. <laughs> <laughs> That bitch tried to kill us. <laughs> um, oh, wow. But no, everybody jumped in. Um, actors were carrying sandbags. Um, directors were being grips. Um, people were doing craft services and just pretty much anywhere that needed help. It was such a small, tight knit group. Um, they just jumped in. People were jumping in for any job that they could do with no egos attached or pride or whatever. Just saying, whatever needs to get done, we're going to do it. And it's very hard to find a group of people, especially in this industry on a professional level, that's willing to do that. So it was quite refreshing. Um, working with these people and having a great time and all led by TJ Scott, so great. It's great to be here. And, and Dan is amazing in it. Wait till you see Dan in it. Dan is like, he seals the show. Yeah. He just yeah. seals the show. Yeah. Yeah. You just keep his, getting your eyes yeah. off of him. It's like, wow. It's, dead man it's not there, but we just, wow. Ooh, so good. <laughs> the sequel's great, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's more definitely. <laughs> okay, I want to, I got to ask a question about Death Valley because uh, obviously, or if not, you guys are all amazing actors, even the folks that aren't acting, uh, that you like each other. So talk to us a little bit. How did you put all that together, TJ? Did you did you want to make sure you were working with this group as you put Death Valley together? Yeah. It, it, it sort of <laughs> – it, it was funny how it came together. It was uh, – no. it was <laughs> just really friends and family, and, and that's kind of how it is, is – Except for Dan looks great. He's hate to tell you to stand in front of everybody. But it was just all the people that I'd worked with before that I knew would, would be fantastic and sort of handpicked, and it just worked out great. Was there anything while you were shooting, TJ, that uh, that stuck out to you that was funny that you weren't expecting? Um, and then also Tatiana would like everybody from Spartacus to blow her a kiss, please and thank you. <laughs> and I want a unicorn, Tatiana. One thing does not necessarily make it so. <laughs> uh, I think the, the one funny unexpected thing was that there was a character called Disco Man. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's who right. Coming into uh, the show every once in a while when Nick wasn't there, all of a sudden <laughs> Disco Man was there. It was kind of like... Yeah. It's a spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> Nick there is, would come up with kind of a disco give you surprise sex behind you <laughs> without you, you knowing get, that yeah. he was there, uh, yeah. and Juliet would film it all and show it to you later. You were getting <laughs> disco bombs. Disco bombs. I call it disco Everyone tech. in the crew were getting disco tech. <laughs> you should give oh, them yeah. a demo. Uh, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think, I think a demonstration... Show us giving me five dollars. A demonstration is really going to add to the... Uh, to the value of this particular recording. Uh, Wait, what? Wait, what? It's if, if Dan can give us a demo, it's really going to make a big difference on this. <laughs> go man, go go I, 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 need, I, need, I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. I, I need to put a scene in front of me. I'm going to do a scene. So here's what we're going to do. All right, just follow with me, all right? So pretend that you guys are still doing an interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm still there, so I have to ask him a question. I'll, I'll play along. I'll play along. So, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Yeah. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? No, no, no. no. no he's like, nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. So here goes the, here goes the question. Let tell me a little bit about obviously the soundtrack that's going on with Death Valley. Talk a little bit about soundtrack and what that's going to be like. Um, the soundtrack is going to be uh, minimal and beautiful and kind of evoke the loneliness of the desert. Put <laughs> 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 really. I'm really sorry. <laughs> the desert isn't so lonely with Nick and I. <laughs> uh, it was never lonely. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> you just got discotheked. Perfect, oh. perfect. Um, Sean and Juliet are in a band together called 8mm, and they're going to be putting together our music, they're quite amazing. Uh, just listen to their CD on the ride home, and it was fantastic. So if you guys get a chance, actually, yeah, we did eight millimeter, in, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, well put together. Yeah, 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 yeah it was really good. I really, I, like, I, I feel so stupid. I was like, 
Do they really? Is that them? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of awesome. Sean, there, here's a chance to do a plug. Uh, where where can people go to uh, hear the music or to, to see what work you're doing right now? 8millimeterlovesyou.com. <laughs> Pretty simple. That's where all the links and you can find everything there. Yeah, and their music's amazing. It really is. Well, she, she should be in the movie. I swear to God, the first song, that was, that should be, such, a such, a, such an yeah. awesome, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, when you, I don't know which one was the other one, Get Over It, or something, you know, everybody says, oh, yeah, Get yeah, Over yeah. It. Yeah, everybody says, yeah. Yeah, Get Over It, that was, was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. when the first you, song uh, I saw about killing, right? They're all about this. <laughs> 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 between the devil and two black arts. That's probably my favorite song. Yeah, yeah. That song is when you actually hit my Kickstarter. Without the lyrics, that is the song they did the music for. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that the song, the the video on Kickstarter? Because that is yeah. an amazing, and it fits so well with with the images. It's amazing. Eight millimeter. Yeah, it was amazing. Pretty awesome. TJ's like, give me the instrumental, and and it worked perfect. Yeah. One one last question, guys. Right now, it looks like uh, obviously you've completely funded the book, TJ, and and it's going to be a huge success. Uh, any regrets? Anything you wish you had done differently in this process? No, and uh, volume two, I'll fix up anything that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> what could you not have liked? No, 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 no. It was fantastic. It was I like... think I think what DJ didn't like, he wanted more pictures of me, and I was like, no, it can't just be about me all the time. Let everybody else have their shot too. That's all right. You, you have to. You have to share. You got to share. Nick, Nick was actually very particular when he showed up. He says, everyone's done shots in the tub. I want to do some out of the tub, too. So actually, That's right. His <laughs> main right. photo where he's actually on the edge of the tub flicking water at me, which uh, is very yeah. appropriate. Director. Try to shoot me now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Only we shot this after Death Valley. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. We want to thank uh, all of you very much uh, for for coming on the show, and and just want to again say this is an amazing project you you guys worked on. The the art is amazing, and thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday evening to spend with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Oh, kiss. Oh, kiss. Oh, kiss. Who? Who's part? Tatiana. What's her name? Tatiana. Is there a picture of Tatiana? Just to make sure. <laughs> what kind of kiss we're giving you? Right? <laughs> 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 Thank Thank you for joining us, boys and girls. If you want to help the fellas with their show, please sign up for their VIP list. That way, they can send you their free guide on how to crowdfund your project. Tune in next week as we learn more about how to reach your dreams with crowdfunding. Till then, remember, keep dreaming and don't get tied down with any strings.